Hi folks, and welcome to a new Let's Play on the channel. It's, well, it's kind of new. It's RimWorld again. One of my favourite games. We're going to do something just a tad different from the last few. We're going to go with a new colony. We're going to go with the Rich Explorer. And we're going to try and kind of get away from my usual uh, fallback plans. We're going to go with a rough Cassandra Classic on commitment mode. So no reloads. Whatever happens, happens. And, uh... A rough storyteller which will make it a little bit more difficult we're just gonna go with a 30% seed uh, of uh, beast which will be absolutely fine now the premise for this one I am NOT gonna regenerate or randomize or pick my first character at all whatever we get is what we get and we will be playing as a reality TV star who has feigned their own crash landing to revive their dying career so uh, that's Mount Bren, that sounds kind of okay. What's this here? Okay, so 20 out of 60 days growing period, and that's one of the things I want to break. My other LPs, I've always went with 100% of the year you can grow, and I find that is, uh, it makes things quite easy. We're going to go with a Boreal Forest, which is a Coniferous and a hard, Harsh Winters, kind of, kind of Nordic, I guess. Um, plenty of animals around. There are some berries. Um... And we're not going to start on one of these blocks with a large amount of resources of uh, stone that you can dig down and grab all of the uh, minerals from. So, I think this is as good a place as any. We do have some bandits nearby-ish, as well as a few uh, potential trading partners. Let's see who we get. So we are... Oh, even perfect. Uh, shelter child, deep space miner. Okay, so we're good at shooting. We're good at mining, medical and social. Okay, that makes... I like that they're good at social-ish, because, you know, reality TV star. Medical and shooting, big pluses. Mining's pretty good, incapable of none. We are an ugly, jealous pessimist, and if that doesn't scream media influencer, I don't know what does. And uh, our nickname here for Shizuka will be uh, Big Money. And that's it. That's all we're doing for prep. We're gonna we're gonna pick big money. We're not even gonna look at the others, and we are gonna th uh, fling ourselves down onto this rim world with uh, a cell phone in hand, and it is hashtag story time. OMG, stranded on a rim world. Here's my Patreon in the link. Um, there we are. We'll uh, unforbid all of this stuff. And then we will equip our rifle. Now, of course, we did bring our channel mascot Adonis the Arctic Fox. And I think the first thing we're going to do is take a look around the map and see what we have. Um, okay, so a few structures around. Half decent amount of uh, places to mine. I'm seeing some compacted machinery and compacted uh, steel. Mega Sloth is on the map. We're not going to hunt that because that's uh, a bit dangerous. But we do have things like uh, rams, ibex, and turkeys. Geothermal power over there and up here. Plenty of. Uh, is that caribou or reindeer? Caribou. You know, I think where we are is a pretty good spot to set up. Um, we can't build on this green land here. But basically, all of this. We'll expand to the north. Make sure to leave that geyser free. Plenty of steel there. And we are passionate about mining, which is nice. Not about construction, which that bit kind of sucks. But we will throw up a quick, uh, quick house here for us to start in. This is not going to be anything even uh, remotely nice. Go to our orders, and we'll uh, we'll claim the rest of this building so that we maintain it. What is our actual construction skill like on uh, on big money here? We're at a four. That's I, that's passable. That'll be enough to get us started. It's not gonna um, it's not gonna break the bank. We did just botch constructing a simple wooden door. Nice. Okay. So she'll fling up a roof, uh, furniture, okay, 
let's uh, let's throw down a nice bed, and we'll throw in a a torch as well. And that might be about all we get done today. We'll just triple speed this now. We don't need to uh, don't need to hang around too much. Let's get ourselves uh, an animal sleeping spot up in this corner for our fox. And now we've got the the super basics covered, but what we want to do is just place two wooden walls out the back here so that we can make a little storage area behind our shed and you can do that by going to uh, architect zone you want to build a roofed area so that this stuff can be stored without being um, degraded by being outside Take her a long time to chop down these trees because big money here sucks at basically everything. And then we just throw out a simple stockpile zone. So all of our steel and wood that we claimed at the start of the day here, we should start throwing that under the lean-to at the back of our uh, luxurious uh, Rimworld condo. Lots of geothermal power on this map. This here. Uh, that's probably an ancient danger. I'm just going off of the assumption that anyone watching this series is at least vaguely familiar with RimWorld by now. So I'm not going to explain um, absolutely everything I'm doing. Plenty of gathering to be done. Now, um, someone else will show up to the colony. I'm not sure when. Okay, so we're done with all that. Now then, what power can we build? Just wood fuel generators. Well, there is plenty of wood. Or we can go with a wind turbine. We can't build batteries yet. So the wood fuel generator really is our, uh, our best bet. Now we're going to expand north. So I think we'll actually throw the generator to the south of the building. Like so. And that's going to take components and steel. We need to get, um, essentially we need to get refrigeration up as soon as possible so we can hunt a few of these animals and get power up so that we can uh, get to crafting pretty much anything and everything that we're going to need. So I think we'll, we'll build a, a freezer probably uh, somewhere alongside this building and then we'll build a small crafting area to get started okay night time is done we have power that's nice but to really make use of that we're going to need um, a lot of wood so we're just gonna skip through this day with all of that wood set to be harvested big money going for a walk there. Now there is a timber wolf around. I think what we're, go we're gonna do for now, we are going to uh, manage areas. We are going to make a new area and we're just gonna name this the, uh, the foxhole. Make this just our room there and then we're gonna go to animals. And we're going to set the fox to only be allowed in the house. The, uh, the hashtag foxhole. Because if we don't do that, there are dangerous things on the map like timber wolves. And they may very well eat our channel mascot. And then who's going to subscribe to us if we don't have Adonis? He's, uh, he's the face of our brand as an international, well, inter interstellar influencer. I imagine most of our sponsorship deals, uh expired when we went into cryo sleep. How old is Big Money? I didn't check. Okay, so we were 31 when we left, but we're 412 now. So the companies who were sponsoring us have long since went out of business, but that is not even any kind of big deal to Big Money. She will be uh, the most popular influencer to have ever lived. 
You know, I think that is actually probably enough wood now. We can gather all that up. And then structure, wooden wall. Now, do we double this up? I think we do, just to get a little bit of heat insulation. And this should be, uh, this should be big enough for a freezer for a, a decent while for a character this early on in the game. We'll actually cancel the front there. We should build, that's where we'll put our freezer unit. Now the, uh, the wooden torch in our bedroom will actually be keeping us um, heated. It will be keeping us warm. The reason I've doubled up this wall is surfaces will transfer the heat and try and equalize. So if we stick a freezer next to our bedroom, then our bedroom will get colder the closer we are to that wall. As you see right now, our indoor temperature is 23, which is nice and comfortable. The outdoor temperature is around 14. Once we put our freezing unit in here, that's going to drop somewhat significantly. Now we're going to want to run power to the front here. There we are. So we're going to want to go to architect, temperature, cooler. There we are. Throw the blue side facing inwards. And this will complete this. Oh, maybe not. Maybe she'll botch the construction and waste a bunch of resources. There we are. So now we have our freezer. We're going to want to... Um, put something down on the floor in here so we'll probably chop down just a, a few more trees make sure we have enough wood to really uh, never really run low because we do have that uh, wood burning generator we're gonna want the temperature inside to be at like minus five as a target which will use a little bit less power and while that begins to cool down we'll chop down some trees to make the floor And we are just going to go with a simple wooden floor in our freezer here. Big money going for a walk. And we are going to need everyone's favorite item, the horseshoe pin. We'll throw that down outside so she can make that as well. We have a visitor. Who's visiting? The street urchin do... Um, wow, what a name. How are you doing, buddy? Now, I doubt they're going to actually stay on, because our, our colony is not very impressive right now. But we will be able to kind of woo and uh, bring over people from being guests into being colonists. Now, we're going to make another stockpile zone in here with a slight difference. Storage, we're basically not going to allow rotten. We're going to allow all foods. And then in manufactured, we're going to allow medicine. We're going to disallow absolutely everything else. There we are. Um, corpses. We're going to allow animal corpses, but disallow rotten. So only fresh animal corpses will be stored in our freezer. They'll get frozen, and then we can butcher them whenever we're ready. And now, we will probably double up on the walls again, so that we can insulate this place nicely. And then tomorrow we'll build a crafting room that will serve as our kitchen, rec room, and quite possibly like our actual, um, Big Money's actual home relatively soon as well. And we'll probably turn this into a prison cell. There goes our visitor. That's fine. We're not too concerned about that. point we should uh, disallow foods from in there now as well so that all of our food will be put in the freezer it will give us a much more uh, 
easy visual cue of how much food we have. Now we're probably out of time to grow anything, but uh, big money isn't exactly green thumbed anyway, so we're not going to worry too much about that. We are going to double up on this wall, keep the heat in our normal rooms and out of our freezer. Coolio. Making good progress on all this. Uh, and we might want to try and hunt our first animal. Get some practice in on, uh, on the shooting. Caribou have quite a bit of meat. And that pulse rifle, as you can see, is like a it's triple shot. It's one of the one of the better weapons in the game. You can display health up here. And this animal is already dead. It just doesn't realize it yet. In seven hours, if we do nothing else, it is going to bleed out. It's a twelve year old male caribou. Now if your person is really bad at this, they will just continually shoot an animal over and over and over again, and they might even shoot body parts off, and you will get less meat and uh, leather out of the animal than you normally would. Now, I don't think we've shot anything off it. It's four hours until it dies. And uh, from doing this, Big Money's skill is actually going up. You can see she's gained... 2300 out of the 4000 skills she needs. There we are, she finally killed it. And now she should take that and go slap it down in the freezer before she continues with uh, the construction. Oh, mad squirrel. Where are you at, squirrel buddy? Let's weaponize our character here. Mad animals like this, for those of you who don't know, will attempt to kill your characters. Okay, and this one knows where we are. But it is going to give up. We will go stand in the doorway here. Now that it has line of sight to us, it's going to come at us again. We should get two shots off. And then... It's going to run away, I guess? Or is it going to try and punch its way through a different wall? I don't know what this squirrel's game plan is. I am, I am not a squirrel whisperer. Now, as you can see, the squirrel will actually go slower over the um, dark green areas here, the swamp. So those are a good place to lure enemies, if you can get away with it. Now then, it's going to take us a while to finish this build, in another day or so of uh, harvesting. Because we're going to have to put down a floor in there as well, run the power in, and add a few lamps. But the uh, caribou should keep until then. And we will probably uh, gather a bunch of berries when we get the chance. Because meat we can get all year round. The um, other food sources we'll have to take advantage of as and when we can. But it looks like we might get the wall finished today. She'll then have to chop down the trees, make the roof. I'll uh, have to designate all these rocks to be hauled. Which means we're going to need a dump zone. And we'll throw that up there. That'll do for now. Which is also where we'll throw corpses that go rotten. Looks like, yep, the caribou is frozen. Missing no percent of its body. Animal starvation, right. So I think, uh... We'll put, uh... Adonis on unrestricted. And he will go eat some food. Which we have one meal left. We're gonna have to actually, um... Oh no, we have a bunch there, it's just one meal left outside. We might be able to uh, straight up put the floor down. Nope, we are going to have to do just a little bit more gathering of wood. And we're nearly at the point where we can begin uh, producing things, which will be pretty good.
Now, in uh, in the early game of RimWorld like this, you you will, especially on either this or Naked Brutality, which is like one person with absolutely no equipment start, which is, as it would suggest, absolutely brutal. Uh, you really want to get your production up as quickly as you can. The problem with these one-man starts in that regard is that, um, well, even if you have every production building in the world, your production is bottlenecked by your one, uh, your one character, your one tune. I don't know what these guys are actually called. Your one colonist. Nearly done hauling all the rocks out of here. Nice, cool. Now, wood is an easy material to uh, work with in that uh, regard. It builds quickly, easily replaceable in most areas. If you find yourself in an area with no wood, you're likely either going to build your first emergency shelter out of steel, which I have seen done in areas where there are literally no other building materials. Although I would not recommend wasting your steel on like a shed to live in for your first few days. Or you're going to be building out of stones with a stone cutter's table. That is much more uh, sustainable, I think. Especially on maps like this. We have a lot of stone. So we might, um, once we get another person, if we get someone who's really artsy, what we might do is make a stone-based economy. And now that we uh, have a place to hide, we are going to try and hunt the Mega Sloth. Actually, should we do that? You know, I don't think we will. We're not very good with our rifle yet. We'll, uh, we'll add turkeys and stuff to the list eventually. But for now, we're going to let Big Money here build this floor in her uh, hashtag room world condo. Her construction skill will actually be increasing, but at a drastically reduced rate. You see, um, construction is at a five. If she was, if she had like the little flame icon here, or even the big flame, um, her skill rate would go up a lot faster. You see, she's currently learning at 35% because she is just not interested in what she's learning. Now we are going to throw a power conduit out there. And then we'll be able to um, get started with all of this. Nice, okay. Well, she's botched construction of a few things, but that's fine. So we're going to go into our production now. We are going to want... Oh, God, we're going to need a lot more wood again. So I think what we are going to want is just... We're just going to fast forward here. Or maybe not. Okay. Um, so we have our first raid. Now, anyone who's unaware, in RimWorld, you are not the only people on the planet, and everyone wants whatever you have. Even if all of you have is misery and dejection, someone will come and take it from you. Even on the naked brutality start, where you have, you don't even land with the clothes on your back, you land naked, someone will come and want to take your life. Because if that's all you have, that's what they'll take. Now this guy has a club. He has been shot by our charge rifle and we've actually knocked him out. Now we have a very capable medic here in Big Money. I think what we're going to do is set this for prisoners. We're going to capture Jupiter here. He was a recruiter. Now Jupiter is not an ideal recruit. But I think we lack ideal recruits we lack anyone this will give us assuming we can um, assuming we can recruit them this will give us a second person in our colony which I think is uh, I mean he's good at crafting so he could be our artsy guy who we base our, our stone economy off it also means he can turn all of the stone we have in the map into uh, usable building materials, which will free up big money. He is a weak professional in melee combat, so he's also someone who can act as um, cannon fodder for uh, big money here and just run out and uh, get shot at while running at people with a club. Uh, we will build ourselves a new bed just in the corner of this room for now. 
see how's our chance here oh, we're just going to be uh, lowering his resistance for a while so you can't insta recruit people but that's good if we can recruit this guy I'm going to be pretty happy and I guess uh, we will also tag all of those berries to be harvested that's all big money's going to be doing now for a good few days and we're just going to leave it to it because um, we need it done. I think we'll uh, set a few of these animals to be harvested for no other reason than uh, I want big money to learn how to shoot and the only way really to do that is to go hunting or to get into combat. Oh nice, we have a Psychic Soothe for female colonists, which Big Money is, because she is hashtag blessed. Um, there we are, so she's just going to go out and shoot a bunch of animals and stick them in the freezer. We can turn them into money and clothes later. We are going to need winter clothes in the area that we're in. And uh, crafting, Jupiter can do that. So, he doesn't have many skills, but the skill he has is uh, quite diverse in what it can accomplish. See, how is Big Money doing now? She's at shooting four, nearly at shooting five. Now, I've just sent her after these little critters for now to practice so that when she. Why'd you put that in the dump zone? Can... Are fresh corpses allowed in the dump zone? Okay, no, we don't want fresh in the dump zone because then we will be wasting the animals that we just killed. And that's, uh, that's not okay on the, on the karmic scale. Well, what are we hunting now? More rats. I guess that's what we're going to be feeding to uh, Jupiter there. Gathering up more uh, wood. We're going to need that to make a bunch of benches, of which uh, Jupiter will be put to work on. And I guess um, we're also going to have to make two actual bedrooms. And I think uh, this looks like a good place to build residentially. We'll be able to put some nice walls, or actually no, we'll go up here. That way we can put some nice walls and not have to deal with that swamp. She's just walking around. It's probably going to take us quite a while to recruit Jupiter, even if we can. What's his recruitment difficulty? 50%? That's, um, that's doable. I feel like we can get that done. Maybe not immediately, but that is something we can uh, definitely work on. So yeah, if you're lucky in your first raid, like I just was, you will get your hands on... Uh, a not so willing recruit and if you can get those guys and they aren't absolutely useless I have seen people who were just like super injured with long-term conditions they're in their 60s so pretty soon they're not gonna be able to walk or contribute and uh, in some of my previous LPs even I've just had enough people that um, recruiting more wasn't um, I wouldn't say viable but was not necessary So she's going to spend a while botching a bunch of harvests. And this is why we haven't had big money plant any um, crops. Because she sucks at it. And her she is going to gather food much more quickly and ably if we just allow her to um, kill a bunch of animals and occasionally pick some berry bushes. Now I think, again, this is just going to lower Jupiter's resistance. I don't think we actually have a chance of recruiting him just yet. If you make um, higher quality prisons, it seems like their mood goes up from the environment they're in and then they uh, are a little bit easier to recruit, which is worth keeping in mind. But for now, we're just going to allow big money to get on with all of our harvesting. Let's uh, take a look at Jupiter on his, on his full thing here. So he was... he's incapable of caring and firefighting. Psychically sensitive, that's not great, but he is pretty, so it looks like um, Big Money has herself a... Uh... Oh, she found a male nurse, there's a medical assistant, so she found a pretty boy male nurse who went into recruitment later on. He's HR now, but he started as a nurse. Oh, uh, go turn that back on. If that's not on, the, the freezer isn't working. And you know, this actually uh, might be enough wood here, to be honest. So we'll cancel all of this side. 
We'll cancel that. We don't really have enough people to be spending this many days wasting our really good survival foods. But uh, that means we can begin construction of our production tables. We'll throw a butcher's table just up there. We will throw uh, our electric stove down here. Uh, we will throw out a nice... Uh, Standing lamp just in the middle of this room for now. We are lowering, uh, bringing his resistance down quite quickly, with uh, Big Money being the inflow of the cheers, posing for selfies with the guy, I guess, and showing him how many uh, follows she has on. I was going to say Rimgram there, but that that is not a not a great name for a site. Um, yeah, we're burning through our. Uh, rich people food quite quickly we're going to be down to our uh, animals and our berry bushes it would be nice to be able to stop and clean but uh, we only have one person so we're going to butcher creature do forever so she should uh, get on with that relatively soon hopefully Jupiter is still on the mend how's his health doing uh, yeah, he's not doing bad. It doesn't look like he's got any permanent injuries. Now, those rats, squirrels, rabbits, and everything, they're going to give us very small amounts of everything. But the caribou should give us a nice chunk of meat. And there it is. But those um, those other ones should produce uh, yeah, light leather and plain leather. That's quite nice. We can make clothing out of that. What clothing did Jupiter show up with, actually? Uh, gear. What does he have? Okay. His, his stuff's pretty bad. But it'll do until we recruit him. And I think we're gonna... Again, just order all these, these berries harvested. Really try and push up our food reserves. He's fully healed now. Now, hopefully he doesn't, you know, go nuts and try and kill my fox. We're not going to bother building his tailor's bench just yet. But if we recruit this guy, we're going to definitely turn him into a tailor. And have him make a bunch of really nice clothes for um, himself and big money. Start his own uh, clothing line. That seems like something the friend of a, a high-end influencer would do. Okay. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, in RimWorld, when you create food, if all you have is one style of ingredient, like just meat or just um, fruit or just veg, anything of that nature, you can only make low-quality meals. So we're gathering as much of the um, wild edibles as we can before winter arrives and kills them all off so that we can make some uh, higher quality meals although I think Big Money is actually a terrible cook yeah she's at a 2 what's Jupiter at for cooking he's even worse at a 1 so they're probably gonna give themselves food poisoning a lot at the start here Lots of botched harvests, but she is gaining skill in plants by doing this, which is a-okay. I don't know how many more of these she has to get, but um, she's making good progress on them. Yeah, we are going to have to start cooking here real quick. Looks like she might be done because she's doing a lot of hauling now. So she'll haul and clean for the next day or so, and then we'll, um, oh, I guess we should, uh, mark all this as learned. What are you doing now? Going for a walk. Okay, well, we'll let you have your, your time off. Uh, it is raining, so these fires are nothing to be concerned about. The rain's going to put them out. Doesn't look like any real damage was done. 
Still plenty of animals on the map, but that's going to be um, a lot of our resources, including the things we trade, is most definitely going to be coming from uh, the animals that are around the map. We're going to kill them, butcher them, do that whole deal. See what she does when she wakes up. I'm imagining she'll go feed Jupiter and try and recruit him. Come on, you know you want to. Okay, still just uh, lowering his resistance to the idea. But I think we'll get to work on some cooking once she's got all of these uh, berries brought back inside. We'll actually set that up now as a bill, which is... Um, We'll cook fine meal. Do forever. And we can't even actually cook fine meals yet. So we're going to go with simple meals. Do forever. So they're going to turn all of this stuff into simple meals as practice. And to build up a nice stockpile. So it's literally just things like a caribou soup. Like right on a stick. It's, it's like fallout food. It's not great. But it will do. Now we do need warm clothes. We are gonna, like I said, we're gonna be having Jupiter do that, hopefully, as the cold season is almost upon us. But for now, we're just gonna uh, fry up all of that food into something resembling a meal. And especially with how filthy the environment is, food poisoning is on the horizon, folks. We're gonna be throwing up a lot. Adonis. Is Adonis... Yeah, male arctic fox. Can you do anything? Oh yes, we can train you to uh, haul. Which will be super handy, having someone else to carry things around, even if it is a fox who won't be able to carry much. It's uh, something we don't have to do ourselves. And then we can post about our, our fox's um, cool tricks on Instagram. Jupiter, what's your resistance at? 13.7. Eventually we'll get there. We brought him down from, I think, like something in the 20s, which is a fairly substantial amount of resistance, really, but not the end of the world. And it is uh, good training for us, because social, I think, is uh, yeah, it's one of our skills. We're up to seven in that now, so we're, we're nearly as good as he is. Just uh, conversating with this guy. Trying to bring him on board. And it seems like there's some kind of random roll involved with mood. Because I've seen us lower the mood between like 3 and 4 and then 0.7 just now. So I'm not sure uh, what the modifiers are on that. But it does seem to be at least some kind of background roll. Not just a straight um, calculation. Now she's going to be on with this food for a while. Probably the rest of the day. And then... I think we might um, might spend a while just hunting, building up our reserves. I feel like that's uh, not a bad plan. Building up food for the winter and allowing uh, Jupiter to be coerced into joining us. But we'll probably let her do some cleaning first. And maybe even um, build some nice rooms for when Jupiter is converted and for herself. We don't have too much wood though, so it would mean some more some more gathering of wood. I think I'll, I'll leave that selected and occasionally just allow her to uh, do other jobs in between all of that. Yeah, we probably have enough um, basic meals that it should last us through uh, through the, the gathering process. And at any point, if we feel like there's not enough there, we can always just, you know, go out and shoot a few more animals and gather some more stuff. Our freeze are looking much more healthy now. See, it looks like we're gonna have around 30, 30 simple meals. Decent chunk of time there. So those caribous are over 150 meat, which is substantial. I think the mega sloth is over 300, which is, uh, I mean, it's pretty, abs pretty absurd, pretty insane. So 
So she's going to have to just chop down trees, which I, does use a skill. What skill is it? The plants? Yeah, it must be the plant skill. Come on, join me. Join me. Nope, still not joining us. It's going to just take him a while to build that resistance down. Oh, I've forgotten about... Uh, those berries. Apparently we still have berries just randomly out on the map that we hadn't uh, brought inside. So I guess we'll be turning those into food now. Alright, so what's next on our list? It's just gathering. We're just at a kind of a, a bottleneck. This is where the starts with um, like the Lost Tribe or the, the standard crash landed can be quite nice because you will have so many people to do this work for you that you won't need to uh, hang around on bottlenecks like this and it's why it's so vital for us to recruit Jupiter here not only that but um, right now if somebody knocks big money out like if she gets you know bonked on the head in a raid like the, when Jupiter attempted and got fairly close to succeeding like if he'd gotten melee we would have been in trouble um, if she gets knocked unconscious the colony's basically over at least until we get a second person who can, you know, run over and medic her. Although she is the medic herself. Um, I like the idea that she was maybe um, a doctor. Or maybe like a self-taught self doctor. That would make sense for a media influencer, wouldn't it? Maybe she's, oh, maybe she's like an essential oils kind of uh, medicine, you know? It's all pseudoscience and the placebo effect. That's yeah. That, that seems about right. It's uh, big money, the hashtag boss babe. And her essential oils collection. This whole thing's a media stunt so that she can uh, sell more ML MLMs. Get her own team. How are you doing, Jupiter? Nope, still not. Okay, well, that's fine. Once we have this wood, I think, like I said, we're going to work on um, some actual bedrooms for Big Money and uh, Jupiter over there. Which will uh, we'll be going up here. I would have liked to have recruited Jupiter and started building things out of stone by now, but um, it's just going to take as long as it takes. We're not going to be able to do anything to speed the process up, I don't think, that we haven't already done. We simply can't spare the uh, the woman power, I guess, as uh, we do only have one person right now, and she is exceptionally busy. We will probably have her go hunting again at some point soon. And it hasn't taken her too long to actually cut down these trees. What's her skill at now in plants? Yeah, she's up to a three. Um, I'm guessing she started at a one, maybe a two. Okay, so our indoor temperature is staying uh, sustainable, at least for now. I guess we want to be thinking about how we want the living space to be arranged because uh, we are going to have to plan that out at least to a certain extent on how we want uh, how we want this to go because you, you need a surprising amount of space coming from uh, Dwarf Fortress to Rimworld like if you've played a lot of Dwarf Fortress not a lot of Rimworld in Dwarf Fortress you can throw like a 1x4 bedroom down throw a bed in the back of it with a chest and stuff that people have to literally climb over to get to and then a table and chair in front of the door and they'll be happy they will be over the moon because they have nice furniture in their closet but um, in Rimworld people actually need room to move around and they need my nice, nice furniture um, another mad squirrel oh and we have another raid let's take a look here it's one guy named Zippy and she has a knife I think that's a she Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Uh, if we can, we are going to claim Zippy. 
Uh, I don't know where the mad squirrels went. I'm assuming it's gonna go fight Zippy. Let's see, what is Zippy doing? Gonna hang around up there for a little while. And yeah, it looks like that mad squirrel, unfortunately. Okay, so we've just been told where there's a ship. A convenient ship that was left on this planet for us to escape with, and it was not at all arranged by, um our agent so we're actually gonna go and hunt Zippy and if we do get Zippy we will just make a second bed in our jail Zippy's up there so we're gonna try and get ourselves out in this green here so that Zippy has to run through some um, slow down terrain to get to us Cover's going to be useless here because Zippy doesn't have a weapon. So there's no point in us like hiding behind rocks or anything that would stop uh, bullets because Zippy doesn't use those. Can't hit target from there. Zippy keeps wandering away, which is bad for us. But oh, here we go. Now, um, like I said, Zippy, oh, oh, well, I guess we just um, insta headshot Zippy maybe. Take a look at Zippy's health here. Oh no, heart destroyed. Yeah, so we just shot her straight in the chest, straight through the center mass, and uh, blew her heart out. Now this does mean we're gonna have to build a few graves. Graves are like the bane of my existence in this game, because uh, by the time I get round to building like a crematorium in my colonies, I usually just have like a 10 by 10 block of graves up in the top corner somewhere. We are going to try and get Zippy buried real quick here. Not out of any kind of particular guilt, but more out of if you leave corpses just lying around. Your colonists tend to get a bit annoyed at you about it. So there we are. We don't have to worry about Zippy anymore. Thus ends the tale of Zippy. We hardly knew ye. Uh, we've gone through a third of our prepared meals, and we have all of the wood nearly gathered up. Um... Oh yeah, the mad squirrel. Butcher that guy, I guess. Turn him into some food. So you get one meal out of a squirrel. That's not bad, really. And I guess we still have some berries up here that we just left outside that we're going to combine with that squirrel and make some, like, I don't know, roadkill stew. Where are we off to now? Building graves. So, really at this point, I'm going to wait until we've even done the... Uh, the cleaning after hauling we should get the cleaning job done because everything where we live is disgusting and it's going to upset not only the colonists but the prisoner and it's going to make them harder to recruit so we're going to let time take over for a little while more travelers from doom okay so what i may do is allow a little bit of time to pass between episodes so that uh, big money here can uh, you know, get all the cleaning done and continue doing what she's doing, which is just, you know, the the day-to-day -day cleaning and hauling now, while I plan out how we want the um, bedroom structure to look and how we, are we going to have like an actual house, apartment building, are we going to keep the rec room in, like physically adjoined, you know, that kind of stuff, or do we want to try and build like uh, individual buildings, so I've never done that before. And that might be worth it. Maybe actually building them little, you know, terraced bungalows or something. We'll see how we feel. Uh, we might build them... I've found if you give them individual bedrooms, they will eat in each other's bedrooms. Like, if you make um, full-on apartments. So I don't think we'll do that. Um, we'll see. I mean, she's nearly done with all of the hauling anyway. And I think that will actually bring her on to the cleaning. Talk to Jupiter. How you doing, buddy? Okay, resistance is down to 7.9. That's, uh... That's not bad. Oh, that really crappy steel knife. Restacking everything. 
There we are. We're under the cleaning now, so I guess we're not going to pause it because, uh, well, we got to it with time to spare, I guess. This is going to improve her mood quite drastically as well, because right now she lives in this crafting room, which is covered in blood, and there's, there's probably more than blood there. There's probably some, you know, innards just that have fell on the floor. So I think, giving it some thought, we're going to go with a kind of terraced bungalow, like, um, almost like beach condo type deal. So what we're going to do, we're going to plan these out made of wood here. We're going to give them five gap wall and we'll put the wall five back and that's going to be the bedrooms so yeah five across five across gap wall down to five this is going to be the size of their bedrooms in fact let's cancel those off i think we'll go to the back of the five we're going to give these guys some substantial bedrooms. Eventually we'll get some, you know, heaters and everything put in here. But for now, we're just going to plan out the, uh... Oh. Well, speaking of moods, uh, Big Money is not in a good mood. She's decided to throw a tantrum. Because she's doing work she doesn't enjoy. So she's just going to run around and, you know, generally make a mess of things. She's going to have to fix it later. So as long as she doesn't actually, like, you know break down any of the walls that's fine for a moment i thought she was punching jupiter in his sleep there uh why have we ran out of power oh i bet she broke one of the power conduits yep well get up and fix that or everything that you uh froze is gonna die there we are nice you can go back to bed now so yeah she's gonna have to fix that um you can repair things up until the point they are like completely broken everything has its own individual health bar obviously wood is a lot more durable uh, sorry a lot less durable than stone and I think um, just to keep uh, big money's mood up we might give her a few things to uh, hunt a raccoon a turkey because this is her jam like um, Hunting is, is what she likes to do. She is good at shooting. And honestly, we need the food anyway. Let's take a look at her uh, her needs. Or is it? Yeah. Uh, beauty is right down. She's not happy about beauty. She wasn't happy about recreation, but she is on, like, her own time. She can choose when to recreate. So that one's kind of just on me overworking her, queuing too much stuff up, and her not feeling like she has the time to um, do any of the things that she enjoys. So the hunting should cheer her up a bit. The social with Jupiter, believe it or not, will actually be making her happy. Because it is something uh, that she has a, a thing for. These uh, these flamed items, the, the socials, the, uh, the stuff with a passion. It's stuff that she will... Oh damn, she just insta-gibbed that turkey, okay. You know, I think um, we'll tag these two turkeys to be hunted as well. Get lots of, uh, lots of leather, lots of meat. Because we are going to need it come winter. Hopefully we manage to get hold of uh, Jupiter before winter rolls around. I guess we're making some nice uh, turkey sandwiches now. And I think uh, we might just end this episode off here, folks. Um, I will let a day or two tick by in between episodes... Just uh, probably until Jupiter's resistance. Oh. Oh, well, never mind. He's just walking straight off the map anyway. Yeah, I think um, we will allow Jupiter's resistance to drop to zero. And I will bring you back then so that we can try and progress forwards a little while. Uh, thank you for joining me on episode one here of uh, RimWorld Big Money. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.